Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to take a file that you suspect may have a virus and actually test for it. Now, before we get started, I would highly recommend doing this activity using a virtual machine. Now, I have a couple other videos posted to my YouTube channel showing you how to set one of these up, uh, but in this video, I'm going to be using VMware Workstation. Uh, other good options include VirtualBox, or you can even do this in the cloud using something like Azure or Amazon Web Services. Now, running this in a virtual machine is going to be important because if you're working with something that, that you think might have some malware embedded in it, um, you really want to keep that away from any of your, your real computers, any of your daily drivers, things that people are actually going to be doing real work on. And by doing this in a virtual machine, it allows you to run um, and check suspected files in a sandbox environment. And also, number two, it's important if you're using something like VMware where they have the VMware tools package, I'd also recommend uninstalling that. Um, a lot of these virtualization products, they have packages to make it easier to transfer files uh, from a virtual machine to a host computer, and it adds a lot of quality of life features. And that's great if you're just using a, a virtual machine for just general productivity use. But if you're going to be testing malware, you want to make sure you close out any holes and reduce the risk of a virus or something jumping from the virtual machine to your host computer. So uninstall VMware tools is my general recommendation. Okay. So the site we're going to be using is called Virus Total, and this is just a generic Windows 10 virtual machine I have set up here. I don't have any really any software installed, so I'll go ahead um, and I'm going to use Microsoft Edge. Um, you're welcome to do this uh, using any web browser that you'd like, and it's a completely brand new VM, so it's just taking a second here to set up. Okay, complete setup, confirm. Uh, there we go. Okay, so. There is a really cool website for checking checking a file for viruses. Uh, it's called Virus Total. So you can either Google for Virus Total or just go directly to virustotal.com. Um, it's a pretty easy to remember website. So essentially what you can do on here is you can upload a file or uh, upload a, 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 a URL, so a link to a file. Um, and it'll essentially look at that and, and it'll do some fingerprinting and some scanning of that file to try to determine if there's a virus embedded in it. And if there is a virus, it'll tell you kind of specifically what virus it is so you can understand um, what the intent typically is. What's also really cool about this website is if you upload something that you suspect has a virus, um, if it's not quite sure, like let's say you, you upload something novel, something brand new that VirusTotal hasn't seen before. Well, VirusTotal will make a fingerprint of it. And then later on, if a file has been suspected to be uh, compromised with the virus, um, they'll actually log that and they'll be able to do some, some, data, some data digging in some little data curation is probably the better term um, to figure out like how many people like were infected with it and didn't know how long has uh, this virus or piece of malware been floating around. Uh, so it's a pretty cool service. Now, you can upload any file, and if it doesn't have a virus, well, it's pretty straightforward. It's going to tell you that it doesn't have a virus. And if I make just a basic text document here, uh, so I'll call this virus.txt. Uh, this is a virus. Uh, it's not going to like look at this and like try to find the word virus in a document. It, it's going to use a fingerprinting technique to actually look at a file and look at the signature and see what exactly um, how it's how exactly it's comprised. So regular files, if you upload them that are malware free, uh, as you can see, it'll say undetected. Now, if you upload a real virus, it's going to be able to detect it, and it's going to do that through like the hashing and fingerprinting techniques that the site is going to use. So we need to test this with quote unquote a real virus. And there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, you could find a virus online from a variety of sources, but you want to be very careful about that because if you have, you know, uh, some viruses saved on your computer, even if you're not actively using them or playing around with them, uh, there's still the possibility someone could accidentally execute it. Or even if it's a virus for a system that um, has been patched at your house, like maybe it's a virus for like Windows XP and you're thinking, well, I don't have any Windows XP, uh, then you can be a little bit more liberal about how you play around with them, but you still want to be very mindful of that. If you Google for the malware uh, museum, there's a lot of really cool examples of like old school viruses and other types of malware. Uh, so you can take a look at some of these. Uh, it's on the archive, uh, the Internet Archive, uh, which is an awesome website. They archive all sorts of things from viruses to old video game ROMs. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff on here. But you can take a look at these and play with them, and some of them will trigger 
uh, the virus total website. But honestly, a lot of these are so old that they, they don't even trigger on virus total. These are for like Microsoft DOS. So like, you know, late 80s, early 90s, um, that type of time period. Um, another good way you can get a fake virus is through another site. And that site is eicar.org. So once this loads, you just click on the download anti-malware test file. And this will take you to a page where you can download it. Now, depending on what type of configuration you have, um, your antivirus might pick this up right away. So Windows Defender, as an example, um, is probably gonna pick this right away up on our virtual machine. If I had Norton or McAfee or some other product on here, I would probably find it pretty quick as well. And I also wanna mention, uh, if this is caught, if you're doing this like um, on a, a work computer, as an example, like at a, at a business, um, a lot of times the antivirus products that companies use, um, they do report to like a central, a central place if a virus is detected. So if you do try to do this on like a work computer, um, it's possible that your security office at your, your place of employment, um, they might get a notification that you had downloaded this. Whether or not that's an issue, um, I can't really say, but just be mindful of that. But again, by doing this in a virtual machine, um, you eliminate a lot of that possibility from happening. So I'm gonna click download on this uh, eicar.com file. This is kind of like an old school ex executable file. Um, there's also other options as well. Um, ending in .zip, .txt, et cetera. And this virus, or this malware, I should, be, I should say, um, will be able to be detected in any form or fashion. And as you can see, uh, already Microsoft Edge uh, detected that this has some, some malware, um, and we can try to force it to download. So I'm gonna say, keep anyways. And we wanna keep it anyways. And then it's saying that, okay, we try to download it, but the file was still blocked by Microsoft Event Defender Smart Screen. Well, I'm gonna try selecting Keep again, okay? Keep anyway. And now it says virus detected and well, it's gone. So Microsoft's Windows Defender automatically saw that that was a, that was a suspected virus um, and had quickly deleted it. Now, that is really great if I was like using this computer as like a real computer for just doing day-to-day -day work, but I'm doing this for a test purpose. So what I wanna do is I actually wanna turn off Windows Defender so I can actually download that file um, and try testing it. So go back over here and I'm gonna go into the Windows settings. And if you find, where did it go? Uh, update security, uh, Windows security, uh, open Windows security. Windows, where did it go? Virus and threat protection. Um, I'm gonna turn this off, so manage settings. Turn it off. Turn it off. Just gonna turn everything off in here. And again, these are settings you would definitely want enabled if you were actually going to be using this computer for real work. But because I'm just using this for testing purposes, it's okay to turn it off. Now, you might be thinking, you know, why would you even need the virus total website um, if your computers already have an antivirus. And that's kind of you know, a very good and valid question. And the reason why you would still wanna use this website like VirusTotal is when a new virus is released, when someone develops and releases a new virus or a new piece of malware or some sort of exploit is released for a new vulnerability, uh, by default, uh, the, the companies that produce antivirus software, uh, they're not gonna know. Uh, they will see a file and they won't necessarily know that it's a virus. So what they do is they essentially wait for someone to find a known virus and they're gonna report it. They're gonna tell their vendor, whether it be uh, Microsoft's from Windows Defender or McAfee or Norton or whatnot, and they're gonna say, hey, we found a new virus and they're gonna create a signature for it. And the signature is then uh, essentially sent off to the antivirus publisher and oftentimes they will share it with other publishers and that signature is created and then it starts getting picked up. But when a virus is brand new um, and you're not really quite sure if it's a virus or not or if it's a new virus or not, uh, virus total is a really good resource for that. It kind of starts the reporting piece so you can start to see and look at files, understand what they are. Virus total is also great because if you don't have a piece of anti-virus software installed and you get a suspicious file, uh, you could just upload it just to see if your computer you know, is more likely to be infected or not. But anyways, so uh, with Windows Defender off, uh, I now hypothetically should be able to download this uh, test file. Um, it's still gonna try to warn me. I'm gonna keep it anyways. Keep anyways. Keep anyways. Show more. Keep anyways. Uh, and now as you can see, it did actually let us download it. Still a lot of warnings we had to disregard and ignore because again, Microsoft is trying to protect us. 
uh, but you can eventually force it to download. Uh, now, I actually haven't tried running this file just alone as it is, and we can try that in a second to see what happens. Uh, but first, let's see what happens now if we go back to the VirusTotal website. And I'm going to upload the EICAR.com file. And very quickly, as you can see here, it flags a ton and ton of stuff. So this sets off a ton of different signatures for a lot of different viruses. Or I should say this is detected amongst a lot of antivirus programs is the better way to frame that. Um, so yeah, that's that's a virus total. It's a cool, handy website. Again, make sure you do this uh, in, a, in a sandbox environment. And let's just see what happens if I try running this. Microsoft's uh, not allowing us to run it, run anyways. App can't run on your PC. Yeah, so I doubt this app really does much of anything. I could be wrong. I think it's literally just a dummy file, but there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.